Your turbo diesel is an incredible machine. It delivers massive low-end torque, impressive fuel economy, and can haul loads that would make a gas engine beg for mercy. But here's the problem. Most turbo diesel owners are unknowingly destroying their engines with simple mistakes that seem harmless but cause thousands of dollars in damage. Stick around until the end because number four alone could save you from a massive repair bill that most diesel owners never see coming. Let's start with mistake number one, and this one kills more turbos than anything else. Mistake number one, shutting off your engine immediately after driving. You just finished a long highway drive or pulled a heavy trailer up a mountain pass. Your turbo has been spinning at over 100,000 revolutions per minute, reaching temperatures that would melt aluminum. The moment you park, you turn the key off and walk away. You just signed your turbo's death warranty. Well, um, if you keep on doing it. When you shut off a hot engine immediately, the turbo is still spinning at incredible speeds, but the oil circulation stops instantly. That superheated oil sitting in the turbo bearing starts cooking, forming hard carbon deposits called coke. These deposits act like sandpaper on your precision turbo bearings. The fix is simple, but most people ignore it. After any spirited driving, highway speeds, or heavy towing, let your engine idle for 60 to 90 seconds before shutting it off. This allows the turbo to slow down gradually while maintaining oil circulation for cooling and lubrication. Modern diesels have some protection built in like water cooler turbos and oil coolers, but don't rely on it entirely. That minute of idling could save you a $4,000 turbo replacement. But here's what's really interesting. The cool down isn't just about the turbo. Your entire engine benefits from this gradual temperature reduction, especially the oil itself. Which brings us to mistake number two, and this one affects every single drive cycle. Mistake number two, ignoring your diesel's unique warm-up needs. Diesel engines are not gas engines, and treating them the same way will shorten their lifespan significantly. Diesels need proper warm-up time, especially in cold weather, but most people either don't warm them up enough or warm them up incorrectly. Cold diesel oil is thick and doesn't flow properly to critical components like your turbo bearings. Starting a cold diesel and immediately driving hard is like trying to squeeze honey through a straw. Your bearings don't get proper lubrication, leading to premature wear. But here's where most people go wrong. They let their diesel idle for 10 or 50 minutes, thinking they're helping. Extended idling at low temperatures actually makes the problem worse. The engine never reaches proper operating temperature, fuel doesn't burn completely, and you end up with fuel dilution in your oil and carbon buildup in your combustion chambers. The correct procedure is to start your diesel. Let it idle for 30 to 90 seconds to get oil circulating, then drive gently until it reaches operating temperature. Keep RPMs low and avoid heavy acceleration until your coolant temperature gauge, or ideally your oil temperature gauge if you have one, shows the engine is fully warmed up. The same principle applies to shutdown. After hard driving or towing, that cool down period we discussed earlier isn't optional. It's critical for preventing oil coking in your turbo and maintaining proper engine health. Here's something else most people don't consider. Fuel quality matters in diesels like in gas engines. Poor quality diesel fuel can clog your injectors, damage your high pressure fuel system, and create deposits throughout your engine. Always buy fuel from reputable stations and consider using a quality diesel fuel additive to keep your fuel system clean. Temperature extremes affect diesels differently too. In extreme cold, diesel fuel can gel, clogging your filters and leaving you stranded. In extreme heat, your cooling system works overtime, and improper maintenance can lead to overheating and catastrophic damage. But even with perfect warm-up and cool-down procedures, there's another mistake that's costing you money every single mile. Mistake number three, using the wrong oil or extending oil change intervals. Most people treat their turbo diesel like a regular gas engine when it comes to oil changes. Big mistake. Turbo diesels are absolutely brutal on engine oil, and here's why. First, the temperatures. While a gas engine might see oil temperatures around 200 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, your turbo diesel regularly pushes oil temperatures to 240 degrees or higher. At these temperatures, conventional oil starts breaking down rapidly, losing its ability to protect your engine. Second, the soot. Diesel engines produce significantly more soot than gas engines, and that soot ends up in your oil. While black oil might look alarming, it's actually doing its job by keeping that soot suspended and away from your engine components. But there's a limit to how much contamination your oil can handle. Third, the turbo factor. Your turbocharger relies on that same engine oil for lubrication and cooling. The turbo shaft spins at speeds that would make a Formula One engine jealous, creating extreme pressure on the oil fill. Any breakdown in oil quality directly threatens your turbo's survival. So what's the solution? First, use high-quality synthetic oil that meets your manufacturer's specifications. 
Synthetic oil handles high temperatures far better than conventional oil and maintains its protective properties longer. Second, change your oil more frequently than you think you need to. While some gas engines can go 7,500 to 10,000 miles between changes, most turbo diesels should be changed every 5,000 to 7,500 miles, especially if you're doing any towing or hard driving. Don't fall for the extended drain interval marketing. Your oil might technically last longer, but your turbo won't. The few extra dollars you spend on more frequent oil changes will save you thousands in engine repairs. But there's one more mistake that's particularly common with modern diesel vehicles, and it's actually making your emission system work against you. Mistake number five, only making short trips and never letting your DPF regenerate. If you bought a diesel car thinking it was perfect for short city drives and grocery runs, you made a costly mistake. Modern diesels are equipped with a diesel particulate filter or DPF that captures soot from your exhaust. This filter needs to burn off that accumulated soot through a process called regeneration, and that requires sustained high temperatures. Here's the problem. Regeneration typically requires exhaust temperatures around 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. Your diesel only reaches these temperatures during sustained highway driving or when working under load. Short trips around town never allow the exhaust system to get hot enough for proper regeneration. When regeneration fails repeatedly, several things happen. First, your DPF becomes clogged with soot, restricting exhaust flow and reducing power. Second, your engine starts injecting extra fuel to try to heat up the exhaust system, killing your fuel economy. Third, that unburned fuel can wash down into your oil, diluting it and reducing its protective properties. Finally, the back pressure from a clogged DPF can damage your turbocharger. The symptoms are hard to miss. You'll see warning lights on your dashboard, notice black smoke from your exhaust, experience reduced power and watch your fuel economy plummet. Ignoring these warnings can lead to repair bills in the tens of thousands of dollars. The solution is simple but requires changing your driving habits. At least once a week, take your diesel on a 20 to 30 minute highway drive at sustained speeds above 45 miles per hour. This allows the exhaust system to reach proper regeneration temperatures and burn off accumulated soot. If you see a DPF warning light, don't ignore it. Take your diesel out for an extended highway drive immediately. Most cars will complete an active regeneration cycle during this drive, clearing the warning light and preventing expensive damage. This brings us to a crucial point. Your EGR system, which recirculates exhaust gases back into your engine, can become clogged with carbon deposits. When this happens, your engine doesn't run properly, creating more soot and overwhelming your DPF. Regular cleaning of your EGR valve and proper maintenance of your entire emission system is critical for long-term reliability. Now, let's wrap this up with the most important takeaway. Your turbo diesel is an investment, not just a vehicle. These engines are designed to run for hundreds of thousands of miles when properly maintained, but they're less forgiving of neglect than simpler gas engines. The extra complexity of turbochargers, high-pressure fuel systems, and emissions equipment means that small problems can quickly become expensive repairs. The good news is that avoiding these five mistakes will dramatically extend your diesel's lifespan and save you thousands in repair bills.